I am uh, Dr. Apelles Ekons, an allergy specialist in Britain, the director of Bow Clinic in Surrey and the Airedale Allergy Centre in Yorkshire. This talk is focused on uh, the investigation and treatments of inhalant allergies. How can these inhalant allergies be investigated properly? Most people know about skin prick tests. They are becoming more readily available in various hospital departments such as immunology, ear, nose and throat, dermatology and respiratory departments as well as some GP practices. Within 10-15 minutes the results can confirm an allergy to some airborne agents, however accuracy is not high. It seems that skin tests in some people can give misleading results, especially if you have been taking antihistamines when you were tested. I reckon that uh, the accuracy is somewhere between 50 and 70 percent. Uh, another test is immunoglobulin E antibodies, uh, which are usually raised in blood samples in the presence of an allergy. Another uh, name for this test is RAST. Uh, and um, it's based on the principle that uh, uh, T cells and plasma cells produce immunoglobulin E antibody specific for an allergen to stimulate mast cell to produce histamine and other proteolytic enzymes. So measuring specific immunoglobulin E's, it gives us some idea whether a person is reacting to dust mites, molds, pollens and so on. Another test is a total immunoglobulin E, which sometimes is used in general practice and hospital medicine to assess one's total allergy baggage, we say. However, when the result is less than 100 kilo units per litre, the assumption is made wrongly that the person does not have any significant allergies. This view is, in my opinion, incorrect because even a normal total immunoglobulin E can hide, can obscure one or more race specific immunoglobulin E's within it. So, for instance, a person might have peanut 4 kilo units per litre and actually have a severe reaction to peanuts. This figure 4 can easily be hidden within the normal range of the total immunoglobulin E. All these tests are available in the NHS. Some private laboratories offer more detailed panels of inhalants and foods. So it is not um, inappropriate to ask your GP or your hospital specialist if that can be carried out for you if there is significant history of uh, various allergies. Inhalant allergy is not, as some people believe, innocent. In other words, taking the inhalers, taking the steroids, taking uh, nasal sprays is not doing very much for the underlying mechanism of allergy. That's why I think some preventative measures are important. Uh, the way inhalant allergy affects people's lives can be seen when a pollen allergy, for instance, costs lower grades to teenagers taking exams. Because as you have in symptoms, your performance may be below the expected standard. Breathing symptoms during the pollen season or all year round have a profound effect on one's immune system in spite of suppressing one's symptoms with medications. Because the underlying reactivity remains active Suppressing uh, any histamine phenomena or any allergic symptoms bears no benefit for a struggling immune system. But, but I don't want you to think that all is doom and gloom. Here's some good news. In the last few years, there's been an increase in the numbers of doctors with special interest in this field. The public awareness has reached a tipping point with the realization that uh, if the immune system is involved in a, a medical condition, there has to be some triggers, some causes 
which may be amenable to more effective management if you knew what the, they were. Since we started replacing carpets in Britain with bare floors, the rates of asthma amongst teenagers have fallen significantly. Some people using bed mattress barrier covers and good quality air purifiers feel better with their breathing literally within days. If these basic air purification measures fail to improve symptoms, there are some safe, reliable and effective methods of immunotherapy. What else can be done to prevent allergies? The answer is immunotherapy or desensitization. Immunotherapy is any method that aims to alter or improve the response of T cells, T lymphocytes, against one or more allergens, in other words, making one's immune system more tolerant of these external factors. About 20 years ago, the World Health Organization, in a position paper, uh, stated that immunotherapy is the most effective tool in the prevention of allergies. Sadly, the effective prevention of common allergies in Britain has been a lesser priority compared to other conditions like hip replacements, catarrh ops, uh, management of diabetes, cardiovascular disease and so on. It is a great paradox in this country that whilst we have no less than four specialised companies supplying other countries with materials for immunotherapy that can prevent and even switch off inhalant allergies, yet they are hardly known amongst health professionals in the UK. There are also two unconventional methods of immunotherapy, such as the low dose immunotherapy and the enzyme potentiated desensitization or EPD, which are known to reverse allergies often within a few weeks or months. Unfortunately, in spite of the support of several positive double blind placebo controlled trials, these methods cannot be publicized because current regulations define them as unlicensed healthcare medicinal products. Thanks for listening.